Okay, in today's video, we're going to learn about solving tri trigonometric equations. Um, this is after we've already learned how to simplify and um, verify trigonometric e expressions. So we're going to use a lot of those skills in this um, section. So to solve trigonometric equations, the first thing you want to do is you want to use any standard algebraic techniques to solve the trigonometric equations. So what I mean by standard algebraic techniques, you're going to do everything that we've learned so far in any algebraic um, technique that you use will also transpose onto trigonometric equations. Then we're going to solve the trigonometric equations if it has multiple angles. What I mean by multiple angles, instead of sine of x, it's sine of 3x or sine of 9x. And then we're going to solve trigonometric equation by process by squaring and converting to a quadratic form. And there's a special thing you have to do in that time. So let's start with the first technique, which is solving trigonometric equations using algebraic techniques. So there's a many, many, many techniques you can use. I cannot go over all the different techniques, but I'm going to focus on the three most popular ones that you will use. And that is solving, if you have a single um, trigonometric, um, trigonometric function, you want to isolate that trigonometric function and solve for it. If you have multiple of the same trigonometric function, you want to collect like terms. And then also there's the factoring technique. So we'll start with an example of isolating a trigonometric function. So here I want to solve 3 tangent squared x minus 1 is equal to 0. So I'm going to use this technique because I only have one trig function, which is tangent squared. So I'm going to start by just doing algebra to get the tangent by itself. So I can add 1 to each side. Now I'm going to divide each side by 3. And then the, remember that tangent squared of x, we understand that to mean tangent x quantity squared. So that's squared. So what's the inverse operation of squaring? Well, it's taking the square root of each side. So I'm going to take the square root of the left-hand side, and when I take the square root of tangent squared x, I get tangent of x, and then I'm going to square root the right-hand side. But remember, anytime you take a square root, don't forget your plus or minus sign. So I have tangent of x is equal to plus or minus. Square root of 1 is just 1, and then that's over the square root of 3. So anytime you have a fraction inside a square root, you break it up. Then I need to rationalize this, and so I got my tangent of x is equal to plus or minus square root of 3 over 3. Now, to work all of these problems, we're going to need to use our unit circle. So um, our unit circle is going to come very, very important, because right now I'm asking myself, in what, um, what angles in the unit circle do I have a tangent equal to either a positive square root of 3 over 3 or negative square root of 3 over 3? So to help us refer back throughout this um, activity, I'm just going to draw my first quadrant of the unit circle up here in, at the top corner. And for reference later on, I'm going to expand this out to include my quadrantal angles. Um, so at pi, and then now I'm going to do at 3 pi over 2, because we might need those occasionally in this video. So remember, our x value is our sine, our, I mean our cosine, our y value is our sine. So now in red, let's figure out our tangents. Remember, tangent is sine divided by cosine. So like for pi over 6, if I take... 1 half and divide it by the square root of 3 over 2. I need to flip the bottom fraction and multiply, so I get 1 over square root of 3, which rationalizing becomes the square root of 3 over 1. Repeating this process for the other angles, these are my tangents in my first quadrant. So when is tangent equal to pi over 3? Well, every angle on the unit circle that has a reference angle of pi over 6. So in quadrant 1, it says, Basically, this is look. You can look at this problem here as tangent of x equal to plus or minus square root of three over three as kind of two problems, like tangent of x is equal to square root of three over three, and tangent of x is equal to negative square root of three over three. And so, when is tangent positive? Tangent is positive in quadrants one and in quadrant three. And tangent is negative in quadrants um, two and in quadrants four. So when it so in quadrant one, um, our tangent that ha, our angle that has a tangent of pi over three would be pi over six. Now in quadrant three, I'm going to use reference angles. My pi over six is my reference angle, so that's the reason why I use that, that first one. So since I'm using reference angle, I need to figure out my original angle that has a reference angle of pi over six in quadrant three. Well, that's easy. All you do for quadrant three is you take pi plus your reference angle. So pi plus pi over six will give me seven pi over six. So those are my first two angles. I got pi over 6 and I got 7 pi over 6. All right, so let's look at, remember that tangent is negative in quadrants 2 and quadrant 4. So in quadrant 2, I need to find the angle has a reference angle of pi over 6. So for quadrant 2, in order to do that, I just simply take pi minus my reference angle. So pi minus pi over 6. And what I'm doing here is I'm showing you the formula for where this came from. So pi minus pi over 6, that will give us 5 pi over 6. And then for quadrant 4, 
to find your original angle. I'm going to take 2 pi plus pi over 6, or I can see that quadrant 1 and quadrant 4 are a pi away from each other, so I can just add plus n pi. So I have two answers here. Um, x is equal to pi over 6 plus n pi, and x is equal to 5 pi over 6 plus n pi. I'm writing When I'm writing this plus n pi or plus 2 n pi, that's called the general form of as the general solution. And that gives us, it does with that periodic function of the function repeating over and over again. Okay, I want you to try this next example. All right, so to solve this, we need to isolate the trig function. So I'm going to divide each side by 2. So sine of x is equal to positive the square root of 3 over 2. So first question I ask myself, in what quadrant is sine positive? Well, that would be quadrants 1 and quadrants 2. So I need to find the angle who has a sine equal to square root of 3 over 2. So go back to my unit circle. Sine is the y. So sine is equal to square root of 2 over 2 for pi over 3 in quadrant 1. And that's going to be my reference angle, so I'm going to start with that. So x is equal to pi over 3. That gives me my quadrant 1. Now, to figure out my quadrant 2 answer, remember to find your angle in quadrant 2, you take pi minus your reference angle. And that's going to give me 2 pi over 3. Uh, but that only gives me one rotation around the unit circle. I need to find my general solution. And so if I start at pi over 3, I know that the period of sine is 2 pi. So I'm going to add 2 in pi to this equation. So my general solution for the first quadrant solution is going to be pi over 3 plus 2 in pi. My general solution for three pi, 2 pi over 3 is going to be 2 pi over 3 plus 2 in pi. And that would be all the solutions to this quadratic this trigonometric equation. The second technique you'll use is if you um, need to combine any like terms. So you need to simplify the equation down. So this can easily be done here by just adding the sine of x to each side of the equation to get 2 sine of x plus square root of 3 is equal to 0. Now I'm going to isolate the trigonometric function like we did in example 1 by subtracting the square root of 3 from each side and then dividing by 2. This time I want to figure out when is sine negative. Ask myself which quadrants is sine negative. Well, sine is negative in quadrants 3 and quadrants 4. But I need reference angles first. So first thing you want to do is figure out when sine is equal to square root of two, uh, 3 over 2 in your in quadrant 1. And uh, look at that in quadrant 1, that's pi over 3. So pi over 3 is my reference angle. So for quadrant 3, to figure out my angle, quadrant 3 pattern is you take pi plus your reference angle to get your angle. And so that's going to give me the angle 4 pi over 3. And for quadrant 4, you take 2 pi minus your reference angle. And that's going to be equal to 5 pi over 3. Then I just need to translate for all the possible angles as I go around the unit circle multiple times. So my solution would be x is equal to 4 pi over 3 plus, again, the period of sine is 2 pi, so that's plus 2 n pi and x is equal to 5 pi over 3 plus 2 n pi. And that will be all the solutions to this trigonometric equation. All right, I want you to solve the next equation on your own. So I'm going to subtract 3 from each side, divide by 4. Then I need to take the square root of each side, so don't forget your plus or minus. And I get cosine of x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. So I'm going to be in all quadrants, okay? because of the plus or minus. So I just need to figure out my answer, my reference angle first. So in quadrant one, so my reference angle is pi over six. So for quadrant two, I take pi minus pi over six, and that's gonna give us five pi over six. And then in quadrant three, pi plus pi over six. So that's gonna give us seven pi over six. And for quadrant four, I get two pi minus pi over six, which gives us 11 pi over 6. All right, so if I'm writing the general form for each of these, I remember that um, sine, cosine is two, is, has a period of 2 pi. So I like this. Now, since I'm in all quadrants, there is a more simplified way. I went ahead and put this answer on there um, because I hadn't talked about simplifying this down. But this is how I really want you to write your answer in a problem like this. Now notice that quadrant 1 and quadrant 3's answer, so that quadrant 1 answer of pi over 6 is here. 
And the quadrant three's answer of phi pi over six is here. And look, it forms a straight line. Remember, a straight line has a um, angle measurement of pi. So I can combine, I'm um, oh, sorry, seven pi over six. I said five pi over six, seven pi over six. I can combine the pi over six and the seven pi over six together in one statement and just say pi over six plus n pi. So change my period from two pi to pi. This only works with this plus or minus one. And likewise, I can combine 5 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6 to the statement x is equal to 5 pi over 6 plus n pi. So because they form a straight line together as well. And so um, that's how I prefer you to write these, simplify them down. I'd All right, so now we're going to use some factoring techniques. Now, this, this can take on any form of factoring that we're going to do. So the key is I have a quadratic here. So I'm going to first get it equal to 0 by subtracting cosine of x from each side. Then I look and see I have a GCF. Both of my factors on the left-hand side have cosine in common, so I'm going to factor cosine out. And that leaves us with 2 cosine x minus 1 inside parentheses. Now I'm going to use my zero product rule to say that the only way two numbers multiplied together equals 0 is if the first number equals 0 or the second factor equals 0. So I'm sending each of these equal to 0. Then I'm going to solve. Well, this first one's already solved. And so I ask myself, what angle on the unit circle has a cosine equal to 0? And that would be our quadrangle angles of pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Then this one I actually need to solve, so I'm going to start by adding um, 1 to each side, then dividing each side by 2. So here I'm, I need to figure out which quadrants has cosine that is positive. Well, cosine, which is your x, is positive in quadrants 1 and quadrants 4. So we got to find our reference angle in quadrant 1. That works in this case. So if looking back at my unit, my quadrant 1 information, I did determine my cosine is equal to 1 half at pi over 3. All right, so that gives us, so x is equal to pi over 3. For quadrant 4, I take my reference angle of pi over 3 and subtract it from 2 pi, and I get 5 pi over 3. Now I need to translate these to our general solution. So that will give us pi over 2 plus pi will give us 3 pi over 2. So if I graph these two, they form a straight line, so I can combine these. This one I can simplify down and write as x is equal to pi over 2 plus n pi. Now, Pi over 3 and the 5 pi over 3, that's quadrants 1 and quadrant 4. They're not a pi away from each other, so I cannot combine these, and I have to keep them separate. So again, the period of cosine is 2 pi, so that's going to be um, x is equal to pi over 3 plus 2 n pi, and x is equal to 5 pi over 3 plus 2 n pi. So I have these three general solutions. All right, you try the next example. All right, so I'm going to, this is already equal to 0, so I'm going to start by factoring this by using um, just factoring techniques. So I'm going to see that this factors to 2, cosine, 2 sine x plus 1 times sine of x minus 1. And then set use my zero product rule and set each factor equal to 0. Solve for sine of x and I end up with sine of x is equal to negative 1 half and sine of x is equal to 1. So in what quadrant is sine negative? Well, sine will be negative in quadrants 3 and in quadrants 4. So I need to go back to my and sine is equal to 1. That's one of my quadrantal angles, and sine is only equal to 1 in my unit circle at pi over 2. So to figure out when sine is equal to negative 1 half, I'm first going to find my reference angle. So I'm going to figure out when is sine equal to a half from my unit circle. And sine is equal to 1 half from my unit circle is at here at pi over 6. So in quadrant 3, if I know my reference angle is pi over 6, to find the actual angle in quadrant 3, remember I take pi plus pi over 6, and that'll give us 7 pi over 6. And then quadrant 4, to find our angle, I take 2 pi minus my reference angle of pi over 6, and that'll give us 11 pi over 6. So my general solution for this problem, well, my first answer of x equals pi over 2, I would rewrite as x is equal to pi over 2 plus 2n pi, because my period of sine is 2 pi, and then 7 pi over 6 plus 2n pi, and finally x is equal to 11 pi over 6 plus 2n pi. And that is all the solutions to this problem. All right, our next technique that we're going to look at is we're going to solve using trigonometric identities. So this is going to be using some of those basic um, trigonometric identities that we've been working with when we did the verifying. I'm also going to change this problem by I'm going to limit my answers to only 0 up into 2 pi. So one revolution around the unit circle, um, zero, you'll count 0, not 2 pi. And so 
Um, first off, I'm going I'm to notice I have a cosine squared, so I can use one of my Pythagorean identities, slightly rewritten, and replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared of theta. Then get rid of the parentheses by distributing the 2 to everything. And the reason I did this is so now I have an equation with only one trig function. If you can get down to one trig function, it's very useful to do that. So I'm going to combine my like terms now. So going back to those algebra algebraic techniques that we learned, we reviewed earlier. Now to factor a quadratic, I like to have my a term positive. So I'm just going to multiply by negative 1, which changes all my signs. And 0 times negative 1 is still 0. And so that's easy to factor. So now I can factor these to 2 cosine of theta minus 3 times sine of theta plus 1. And then using my zero product rule, I'm going to set each of those um, factors equal to 0 and solve the little individual equations. And so I get sine of theta is equal to 3 halves and sine of theta is equal to negative 1. Well, first thing that should really scream at you is you see sine of theta is equal to 3 halves. Well, there's nowhere in the unit circle is sine of theta equal 3 halves. In fact, we know sine of theta wrote, um, oscillates between negative 1 and 1 because the range of sine of theta is from negative 1 to 1. So if I get any answer outside of that range, I can throw it out. So this is a, this is a no solution problem. So that fact throws out. So all I have to really do is figure out the angle on the unit circle where sine is equal to negative 1, which is our quadrantal angle of 3 pi over 2. And that is the only angle... I don't add 2n pi because I only want my answer from um, 0 to 2 pi. So my solution is theta is equal to 3 pi over 2. Okay, pause the video and try this one and figure out what angles in theta, what angles work from 0 to 2 pi for the angle theta. So again, I'm going to start by replacing uh, sine squared x with our Pythagorean identity of 1 minus cosine squared of alpha. Distribute the 2 to get rid of the parentheses. Combine the like terms of 3 and negative, um, negative 3 and 2. Multiply by negative 1 to get rid of, to make our a term or term in front of the x squared positive. And then factor using our knowledge of factoring quadratics. And set each of these individual equations equal to 0 using our zero product rule. And now solve each individual equation by adding 1 and dividing by 2. I get cosine of alpha is equal to 1 half, and cosine of alpha is equal to 1. So here I want to ask myself, in which quadrant is cosine positive? Well, we know cosine is positive in quadrants 1 and in quadrants 4. So going back to my unit circle, I'm going to think, okay, which angle in quadrant 1 has a cosine equal to 1 half? That would be pi over 3. So alpha is equal to pi over 3. Now in quadrant 4, which angle has a cosine equal to 1 half? Well, remember for quadrant 4, you take 2 pi minus your reference angle, pi over 3, and I get 5 pi over 3. So that's my two solutions so far. And then for the other equation, I ask myself, I wonder which quadrantal angle has a cosine equal to 1, which is um, 0 radians. And so my answer to this problem is alpha is equal to 0, pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. I hope you did well on that problem. Okay, our next and last technique that we're going to look at is when, what do you do if you have multiple angles? And so this is just one technique. And notice that this time, instead of having cosine x, so far we've always had just trig function x. Now we have cosine of 3x. That's what I mean by multiple angles. All right, you're going to need to solve this just like you solve all the other problems that we've done. So you want to isolate the trigonometric equation in this case, trigonometric um, function in this case. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add 1 to each side and divide each side by 2 to get the cosine of 3x by itself. And so I ask myself, okay, in what quadrants is, cos is cosine equal to um, pi over 2? So it's positive. So I, again, I know I'm in uh, cosine is positive in quadrant 1 and in quadrants 4. So back in my unit circle, when is cosine equal to pi over 2? Well, that's at pi over 6 for quadrant 1. And for quadrant 4, I take 2 pi minus pi over 3, and that gives us 5 pi over 3. So I, it's not x equals pi over 6 and x equals 5 pi over, over 3. It's 3 pi is equal to pi over 3. 3 pi is equal to 5 pi over 3. 3x is equal to pi over 3 plus 2n pi, and 3x is equal to 5 pi over 3 plus 2n pi, because the period of, si of cosine is 2 pi. 
So now dividing everything by 3, I end up with x is equal to well, pi over 3 divided by 3 is pi over 9. And 2 pi over 3 divided by 3 is going to be 2 pi over th uh, 2 n pi over 3. Dividing each of these side by 3, I get x is equal to 5 pi over 9 plus 2 n pi over 3. I just realized I wrote a 6 over here. I said, I said 9, didn't I? I think I said 9. I hope I said 9. No, no, I'm thinking 9s. This should be 2 n pi over 3. Now, the problem asks that we reduce this um, to just from 0 to 2 pi. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this with a common denominator. So I'm going to rewrite 2 n pi over 3 as 6 n pi over 9. So it's easier for me to work with. And now I'm going to start... And so now I'm going to start just substituting n equals 0 and adding integers, n equals 0, n equals 1, n equals 2, until I get an answer that's beyond 2 pi. So if n is 0, and I plug it into this equation, I get pi over 9. That works. So now I'm going to replace n with 1. I get 7 pi over 9. That's still below 2 pi. So now I'm going to replace n with 2, which is 13 pi over 9. And then replacing n with 4, I mean, sorry, 3. That gives us 19 pi over 9. Well, 18 pi over 9 is 2 pi, so that's over 2 pi. So for the first equation here, pi over 9, 7 pi over 9, 13 pi over 9 are our only solutions within the 0 to 2 pi. I'm going to repeat the process for our other answer of 5 pi over 9. So I'm going to start by replacing n with 0. And then I'm going to replace n with 1. n with 2. And then if I replace n with 3, I get over because 17 pi over 9, I know if I add 5 to that, we're just going to be over. So those are our three solutions. And so my final answer is all six of these answers. So pi over 9, 5 pi over 9, 7 pi over 9, 11 pi over 9, 13 pi over 9, and 17 pi over 9. Now, in this case, I put it in increasing order. I'm not going to require you to do that. On some of the other examples, I'm not going to put it in increasing order. As long as you just list all the angles, you're good. It's nice for me grading it if you put it in increasing order. It makes it more easy for me to grade, but it's not required. So now I want you to try this one on your own. But pause the video and see how you do. Find all the solutions to sine of 3x equals 1 on the from 0 to 2 pi. So this one already has the trig function isolated. And so I just asked myself, on the unit circle, when is, pi, when is sine equal to pi, uh, 1? Well, that's at pi over 2. And then the general form, since sine has a period of 2 pi, is going to be pi over 2 divided by 2n pi. Now to get x by itself, divide each side by 3, we get pi over 6 plus 2n pi over 3. So to find all our solutions, I start by replacing n with 0 and simplifying down. Then I'm going to replace n with 1. I'm going to rewrite it as 4 pi over 6 just so I can get a common denominator. It's easier. I think it's easier if you find your common denominators to add these fractions. Now I'm going to replace n with 2. I get 9 pi over 6, but this one will simplify down. Make sure you always simplify down if possible. So you need to simplify that down to 3 pi over 2. Now if n is 4, I end up with 13 pi over 6. Well, 13 pi over 6 is greater than 2 pi, so that one is not a solution. So my answer to this problem was pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, and 3 pi over 2. Our last technique that we're going to learn in this video is called squaring each side of the equation and then converting to a quadratic type so that we can use some of those quadratic, um, those Pythagorean identities and we can solve it by using our factoring techniques of quadratics. So this is used a lot when you have a trig function that you just can't quite solve for. So you notice in this example, I got sine plus cosine is equal to 1. I can't simplify that down to a single trig function. I can't factor that. I mean, this, I'm stuck. It's like, what can I do? And so that's when you're going to use this squaring technique. And so what you, in order to square each side, you first have to isolate a trig function. So do not square until you have gotten at least one trig function on a side by itself. So I'm going to choose sine. So I'm going to rewrite this as sine of x is equal to 1 minus cosine of x. Now I can square each side of the problem. So sine squared is, is, will be sine squared. And then I have 1 minus cosine x squared. Now be careful. This is 1 minus cosine x times 1 minus cosine x. Don't distribute the square to each of those terms. You won't get the right answer. You have to solve that by using your full method. And you end up with 1 minus 2 cosine of x plus cosine squared x.
And then, oh wait, sine squared x is, is a Pythagorean identity. I can replace that so I can get back in terms of cosine. So I get all my trig, all my, I can get everything in the same trig function. And so I'm gonna replace that sine squared with one minus cosine squared x. Now I'm gonna get this equal to zero by combining all my like terms. And then I can factor out my GCF. So I can take two cosine x out. That leaves us with a cosine x minus one equals zero. Using my zero product rule, see each of these factors equal to zero. So I get cosine of x equals zero and cosine of x minus one equals zero. Dividing each side by two gives me cosine of x equals zero and cosine of x equals one. So these are all quadrantal angles. Where on my unit circle is cosine of x equal to zero? Well, cosine of x is equal to zero at pi over two and at three pi over two. Okay, when is cosine of x equal to one? Well, that will occur at radian of zero, when x is equal to zero. Now, this is important. Please do not forget this step. When you use the squaring of each side, you have changed the problem slightly by squaring something. This will affect your results. And how it affects your results is sometimes you'll get something called extraneous solutions. If you remember from algebra class, extraneous solutions are solutions that work are correct when you work it out algebraically, but they do not work into the original problem. So every solution you get when you use this method, you must check your solutions for extraneous solutions by plugging in every answer you get into the original equation and making sure it works in that original equation. So I'm going to check pi over 2. So I'll go back and I replace every x with pi over 2. And I go back to my unit circle. What is the sign of pi over 2? The sine of pi over 2, we know to be 1. The cosine of pi over 2 is 0. 1 plus 0 is 1. Yes, that one worked. Then I'm going to check my um, 3 pi over 2 answer. So I'm going to have to figure out what is sine of 3 pi over 2 plus cosine of 3 pi over 2. On my unit circle, sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, and cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. Negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1. That is not 1. So this is not work. This is our extraneous solution. We throw it out. Now I need to check x equals 0. So sine of 0 radians plus cosine of 0. Well, sine of 0 is 1. Cosine of 0 is 0. Oh, I, th I said that backwards. Sine of 0 is 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. So that one does work. Therefore, my solution to the problem is only pi over 2 and 0. So x is equal to 0 and pi over 2. You must throw out the extraneous solution. Please, please, please do not forget to check for your extraneous solutions anytime you square the, the equation in order to solve it. All right, I want you to try this last example. So pause the video and see how you do on it. Okay, for, now we're going to look at this one. So we're going to start by... Um, squaring each side of the problem. So we're going to take cosecant squared plus 1 is equal to 1 minus cotangent of 3x squared. And cosecant squared, I can use my Pythagorean identity and replace that with 1 plus cotangent squared is equal to 3x. Then I can use the full method, uh, multiply this 1 minus co cotangent 3x times 1 minus cotangent 3x gives us 1 minus 2 cotangent 3x plus cotangent of squared of 3x. Now I'm going to combine like terms, so I'm going to add the cotangent squared to each side, it cancels out, and I'm going to add the 2 cotangent of 3x, and then 1 minus 1 gives us 0, so I then get cotangent is equal to 3x. So I need to ask myself, what angle in the unit circle has a cotangent that is equal to 0? So that's um, when I'm dividing by, um, so that's 0 divided by 1 or 0 divided by negative 1, which is at pi over 2 n plus n pi will give us the 3 pi over 2 because the period of tangent is pi. So pi over 2 plus n pi. Now I need to divide each side by 3 to get x is equal to pi over 6 plus n pi over 3. And then I'm going to work with this. Um, so I'm going to get a common denominator. So I'm going to write this as 2 n pi over 6 plus pi over 6. Now I've got to find all my solutions in the unit circle from 0 up to 2 pi because that's what the question asked for. So what I'm going to do to do that is I'm just going to go through and replace x starting with, with n, replace n with 0 until I get past 2 pi. So when I put in 0 in place of n, I get pi over 6. When I place n with 1, I end up with 3 pi over 6, which does simplify down, always simplify down. So that gives us pi over 2. 
When I replace n with 2, we get 5 pi over 6. When I place n with 3, we get 7 pi over 6. Now let's replace n with 4. For 9 pi over 6, which simplifies down to 3 pi over 2. Replacing n with 5 gives us 11 pi over 6. Replacing n with 6 gives us 13 pi over 6. That is greater than 2 pi, so I do not include that, and I stop. So let's list all these because there's quite a few results. So I'm going to list all the results that we got. Now, remember, to work this problem, I squared each side of the equation. Every time you solve a problem when you're squaring each side of the equation, you have to check for extraneous solutions. Okay, remember, you check for extraneous solution by plugging in your, all your results into the original equation. So I'm going to start with pi over 6. So cosine of 3 times pi over 6, where 3 times pi over 6 simplifies down to just pi over 2 plus cotangent of pi over 2. And I need to check and see if that equals 1. Well, cosecant of pi over 2 from our unit circle, we know that's 1. Cotangent of pi over 2 is 0. 1 plus 0 is 1, so that one worked. Now I'm going to try x, where pi over 2, x is equal to pi over 2. So pi over 2 times 3 is 3 pi over 2. From my unit circle, I know cosecant of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1 plus 0 which is negative 1. That one does not work, so I throw out the answer pi over 2. Now we're going to check 5 pi over 6. And again, 3 times pi, 5 pi over 6 gives us 5 pi over 2. Cosecant of 5 pi over 2 is 1. Cotangent of 5 pi over 2 is 0, so that one worked. 7 pi over 6. 7 pi over 6 times 3 gives us 7 pi over 2. And cosecant of 7 pi over 2 is negative 1, and cotangent of 7 pi over 2 is 0. So that gives us negative 1, which does not work. So we have to throw this answer out as well. Now I'm going to check 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 times 3 gives us um, 9 pi over 2. And the cosecant of 9 pi over 2 is 1, and the cotangent of 9 pi over 2 is 0. So that one works. Checking my last solution of 11 pi over 6. 11 pi over 6 times 3 gives us 11 pi over 2. Cosecant 11 pi over 2 is negative 1. Cotangent is 0, so that gives us a negative 1 as a solution. So that one does not work. So I only actually had three solutions to this problem. My answer is x is equal to pi over 6. 5 pi over 6 and 3 pi over 6. I know this one had a nice pretty pattern. That doesn't always work. It just happened because I'm multiplying by the 3 here. So you have to check all of your answers for extraneous solutions when you work through these. So please remember that anytime you square each side in order to solve, only in that technique do you have to check for extraneous solutions.